Good morning, everybody. I want to begin by thanking Chairman Bernard Parks and the entire Budget Committee for their hard work and their stewardship. I appreciate uh, their countless hours of consideration, uh, and I want to note uh, the responsible tone and tenor of the debate uh, so far. Uh, the Budget Committee used these past weeks to hold hearings that have been thoughtful uh, and productive. It's been the type of the debate uh, that the people of Los Angeles deserve and expect uh, from their elected officials. And now as the budget moves from the committee uh, to the full city council, uh, decisions will be made that will have a lasting effect on the city and our ability to deliver basic services to our residents. Without a doubt, the original budget will change. That's part of the process. We expect that. But my hope is that we'll work together to ensure that the final budget puts the city on the path toward a long-term fiscal health while protecting the core services that our residents deserve. First, we must commit to using more structural changes than one-time fixes. But if structural changes like layoffs consume too much of the budget, we'll find ourselves without the workforce necessary to deliver the most basic services. If we rely too heavily on one-time solutions, we'll never fix our structural deficit. So we have to strike a balance, one that both protects our most critical services and is fiscally prudent. Second, as the budget is considered today and next week by the entire City Council, I ask members to consider the proposed cuts to the City Gang Reduction and Youth Development Programs. I'll tell you, whether it was Attorney General, Eric Holder, or the many elected officials who have come uh, across uh, the country uh, to see Summer Night Lights and the gang and youth reduction effort. Almost everybody is sad. Uh, this is a state of the art. In fact, when uh, Reverend Carr was at the White House on my behalf to discuss uh, with the president the issue of gang reductions uh, and youth development, our office, our city uh, was singled out as one of them uh, that's on the cutting edge of addressing the issue of prevention and intervention and reentry, but importantly, uh, they talked about summer night lights. And so keeping uh, those programs whole, uh, particularly in these times, uh, is absolutely critical. Now, over the last three years, the comprehensive reorganization of gang programs has worked. It's that simple, partnering with almost 1,000 new officers on our streets Gang-related crimes are down 10%. Gang-related homicides are down nearly 11%. And as I said, to end, uh, well, I didn't say, just last week, Attorney uh, General Eric Holder held up our programs as a national model, saying we need more programs like Summer Night Lights. They're literally, literally turning on the lights uh, on in parks where crimes often occur and offering recreational, educational, and artistic uh, activities. This approach is having a positive effect and an ex example of the innovative approaches that we must adopt. Uh, this marks the first time that we've made real and tangible progress on reducing gang violence. We're seeing uh, our neighborhoods safer uh, in the midst of a recession in some of these areas, and we're uh, asking our colleagues in the council uh, to keep those programs whole. Now, some are, might argue that uh, an 8% or a $1.33 million cut to our gang programs is not significant. But 8% means 296 young people and their families will not receive services, will lose intervention workers, will begin trusting relationship within our communities, relationships that are sometimes the sole reason why we're able to stop uh, violence. And if we lose those intervention uh, workers, we lose some of our best weapons. Uh, in the fight against gang violence. Now, finally, I want to ask the council and our labor partners to consider what options we can take to do better, because this current budget represents one version of our future, and we can do vet better and avoid some of the cuts and services before us if we're all willing to share in the sacrifice. We can find better ways of protecting our fiscal health and balancing our budget. We can come together and find the common ground needed to secure a more sustainable future. 
I welcome dialogue with our partners in labor and look forward to a productive discussion that results in a budget that is balanced. It puts the city on a path to a long-term financial health and protects the core services that our residents deserve. And by that I mean, uh, I'll restate what I've said many times. We don't have to have uh, a proposed budget with the 750 layoffs. You know, a lot has been written about uh, talks that have, uh, or proposals that have gone as high as 4,000. Remember, we, we have, we will, in this budget, have extricated about 3,500 people uh, from positions, either through early retirement, uh, through layoffs, uh, through transfers of some sort. P these were positions with people in it. Those are structural changes because uh, we're removing, uh, reducing the size of the payroll. Now, if we took a 5% cut, if we agreed uh, to raise our pensions prospectively, uh, if we agreed uh, to changes in our medical benefits, we could put together a package uh, that could avoid layoffs. I know the council is uh, addressing that as we speak. But what everybody has to know and understand is that we will have uh, the appropriate balance of structural and one-time uh, cuts in this budget. We must have uh, the kind of structural fixes that put us in a better financial position next year and the year beyond. 